year that has brought the Drivers and Constructors World Championship to Australia's Jack Brabham, three times world champion, has become almost legendary. Since the French Grand Prix of 1906, only one non-European car has ever won a first-rank European Grand Prix. That was the American Duesenberg in 1921. It has remained for an Australian racing motorist, driving a car of his own manufacture with an Australian-made engine to break the grip of European racing cars. The Redco Brabham engine is the result of the automotive engineering skills, research facilities and manufacturing resources of Repco, the largest manufacturer of automotive parts in the Southern Hemisphere. With this engine, Australia has come of age in World Championship motor racing by winning the French Grand Prix, which was also the Grand Prix of Europe. In May 1966, Silverstone provided a preview in Britain of racing with the new Formula One cars up to three litres. Jack Brabham's car is an unknown quantity at this moment, but soon the Australian V8 engine is to make its presence felt in this highly specialised field of motor racing. Jack is soon out in front with John Surtees in a V12 Ferrari on his tail and the race develops into a duel between number two and number four. But the Ferrari is not going to catch the Repco Brabham. The Silverstone International Trophy is the first race in Britain of the new formula. And Jack wins this Grand Prix preview at an average speed of over 116 miles per hour. And now the start of the greatest success story in the history of international motor racing. The location, Reims, France. And the race, the French Grand Prix and Grand Prix of Europe, in which the Repco Brabham's will set up the fastest average speed ever achieved in a Grand Prix race. Jack driving number 12 is the first driver ever to win a world title event in a car of his own construction. His average speed for the race is nearly 137 miles per hour. His teammate, Denny Holm, also driving a Repco Brabham, was third. Now, the British Grand Prix on the Brands Hatch track. The fastest lap in practice has given Jack pole position on the grid, and he keeps in front right from the start. Jack has fitted tyres for dry weather in spite of rain, and his gamble pays off. John Surtees driving a Cooper Maserati. World champion Jim Clark driving a Lotus Climax. Graham Hill in a BRM duels with Clark. But none of them can catch the Repco Brabham. Denny Holm is chasing Graham Hill and eventually passes him. After earlier wet conditions, the track is drying out to give the Repco Brabham team an advantage. In this race, Jack is proving that he's not too old at 40. He's led from start to finish to win at an average speed of 95.49 miles per hour with Denny Holm second. Jack's Repco Brabham has lapped every other car in the race except Denny's. At Zandvoort, Holland, world interest now focused on the Repco Brabham cars. The circuit has been modified for the Dutch Grand Prix to cope with cars of the new Formula One. With Jack again in the full spot, 17 machines set off over the dunes before an excited audience. Jack, number 16, forges ahead of Jim Clark, who is soon troubled with a hot engine. Jack's Repco Brabham is performing beautifully. He's maintaining a steady pressure and is well on the way to achieving his third consecutive Grand Prix victory.
retire shortly with ignition trouble after an excellent performance. And Jack wins with an average speed of 100.09 miles per hour. A remarkable series of wins. Jim Clark had won this race for the previous three years. Now the German Grand Prix. 14 miles of ups and downs over the grueling Nürburgring. Jack number three has planned for rain and has fitted wet weather tires. And once again, his gamble pays off. serious challenger, but clutch trouble will spoil his chances before the race is finished. The cars race in a cloud of spray, very difficult conditions that tax drivers and machines to the utmost. And it's Jack's race making four in a row. In London, the British Automobile Racing Club honors Jack with a dinner. Graham Hill and Jim Clark are among the personalities present. Jack and his wife are welcomed by the Duke and Duchess of Richmond and Gordon. Jack receives the club's gold medal for his unique double, the manufacturer's and driver's titles. Jack has also been invested with the OBE by the Queen of England during this fantastic year. Following his Grand Prix win in Germany, Jack accepts an invitation to come back to Australia for Speed Week at Surfers Paradise, the popular beach resort on the South Queensland coast, where thousands of visitors from the southern states come to escape from the cold winter weather. The parking meter maids help to preserve good public relations with the visitors by patrolling the streets, keeping watch for those who've allowed their parking time to run out. Queensland Holiday Resort provides year-round conditions for those popular Australian pastimes, sunbathing and surfing. The newly established Surfers Paradise International Motor Circuit is holding its first speed week, and Jack Brabham and Jackie Stewart are among the many colourful overseas and Australian personalities who have come to help launch the new enterprise. This is a chance for Australian motor racing enthusiasts to see for themselves a Formula One Repco Brabham racing car at close quarters. The Repco engine is a racing mechanic's dream. It has been designed for easy accessibility and maintenance. The engine was built by Repco to demonstrate to the world the high quality of Australian made components and their ability to function reliably in highly stressed applications. Repco companies supplying components of many types are gaining new knowledge and experience from these racing engines. The Repco Group already exports to more than 90 countries, and by competing so successfully in international racing, the Repco name has grown considerably in stature. While mechanics take care of the car, Jack takes care of the public relations. It's a busy round of press and TV interviews and satisfying autograph hunters. racing engine was wholly designed and developed by a team of Repco engineers and the manufacturing project is under the management of Frank Hallam who has for many years been prominent on the technical development side of motorsport in Australia. Frank Hallam is here today to watch the car's performance at first hand and to discuss its technicalities with Jack. Thousands of Australians are here to see their world champion who obliges with yet another autograph.
Some spectators have come from as far as Perth, 3,000 miles away in Western Australia, to watch Jack compete in the Repco Brabham car. Jack has come 12,000 miles especially to be here today. The Surface Speed Week event for racing cars should be exciting. After one and a half laps, Jack is out of the race with a minor fault, and Jackie Stewart goes on to win the 10-lap race. Jack flew back to Europe to become world champion again, and he returned to Sydney, his hometown, in February, following the International Grand Prix season. finds that there are some startling new buildings to be seen on the city's skyline. Jack is to appear in several of the Tasman series of races which are attracting some of the world's most notable racing drivers to New Zealand and Australia during the European winter. Jackie Stewart is back with the Owen Racing Organization's BRNs. Jim Clark and Graham Hill of Team Lotus discuss tactics for the 32nd Australian Grand Prix race to be contested in Sydney. equipped Repco Brabham racing team loads the two cars to be used by Jack Brabham and Denny Holm into the specially designed trailers. The Repco Brabham emblem with the V in the form of a boomerang against a background of a checkered flag in Australia's colours of gold and green. The 32nd Australian Grand Prix to be raced here at Warwick Farm is a race of 45 laps covering 101 miles. Jack's presence with so many overseas, Australian and New Zealand racing personalities has attracted a crowd of 35,000. Jack's mechanic, New Zealander Roy Billington, supervises the unloading of the two cars which represent the latest creations of Australian Ron Turanek, Jack's chief designer in England. Jack's teammate, New Zealander Denny Holm, finished fourth in the World Drivers' Championship with one second and three third places, driving cars of Jack's manufacture. In every race in which Denny reached a place, he was using a Repco engine. More autographs by Jack, the quiet, obliging and always unassuming Australian. For the Repco organisation at these events, the Repco racing engines have become the means of demonstrating not only to Australians, but to the rest of the world, something of the quality of Repco automotive components. Jackie Stewart is wearing the latest mod fashion in headgear from Carnaby Street. Today, seven cars built by Jack will line up on the grid for the start of the 1967 Australian Grand Prix. Two of these cars are fitted with Repco's new 2.5-litre racing engines. Jackie Stewart, BRM. Jim Clark, Lotus 33 Climax. Graham Hill, Lotus Formula 2 Ford. Jack, Repco Brabham V8 and Frank Gardner, Brabham Climax. Denny Holm, Repco Brabham V8.
Jack gets off to a good start and the crowd is looking forward to the duels that must develop between so many talented racing drivers. Strikes trouble with tyres which are overheating and losing their adhesion. The tyre trouble forces him to ease off and drop back into fourth place. Another disappointment and anticlimax for a man who has preached the philosophy of reliability in his entire approach to automotive engineering and racing. Jack continues in the race but is prevented from demonstrating the full capabilities of the new car. And it's Jackie Stewart's race in the fastest time ever with Jim Clark second and Frank Gardner third. Melbourne is the home of most of the companies which comprise the Repco Group, of which the Repco Brabham Engine Company is a member. Jack Brabham and Denny Holm discuss with Roy Billington engine torque and gear ratios prior to their appearance at Sandown Motor Racing Circuit. A close association has developed between the world champion and Repco. Jack's regular visits to Melbourne have helped to keep Repco in touch with some of the finer details of overseas motor racing developments. On this trip, Frank Hallam shows Jack some of the production techniques being used to produce the racing engines. Jack has brought several of his top racing mechanics with him from England to prepare his cars. Here they are working side by side with the Repco men who are producing the engines, gaining valuable knowledge and experience in the process, and in return giving their Australian counterparts something of the active service background of international motor racing. Melbourne's Sandown Park, where Jack won the 1964 Australian Grand Prix driving a Repco Brabham. Today, another 35,000 spectators are here to watch the Repco Brabham racing team in action. Jack's father. He's a very proud man these days. To view the stable of racing cars and to see their world-famous drivers at close quarters is well worth the cost of a special ticket of admission to the pit enclosure. Jack and Denny want to make sure today that nothing will go wrong. The team has a big following in Melbourne and there are a lot of Repco people here too who want to see something really spectacular. Jack talks with Sir Norman Martin of the Australia Day Committee and Repco's Managing Director, Mr Ted Callanan. 
Mr. Callanan, on behalf of the Australia Day Committee, presents Jack with a medallion which honours him as the Australian of the Year. It has truly been for Jack his fantastic year. Today there will be eight Repco Brabham cars in the International Cup race, the fifth heat of the Tasman Championship 1967. Jack soon shoots to the lead and appears all set for a copybook example of racing driving. Today, Scotsman Jim Clark, who looks like winning the Tasman series, is the big threat, and there is a tremendous interest in the 52-lap race between so many of the world's champion drivers. After nine exciting laps, Jack is out of the race with an ignition fault. But Denny keeps the team flag flying. Jack is disconsolate while his team in the pits tries to locate the trouble. It turns out to be a broken lead in the transistor ignition wiring. Although disappointed, Jack, always the epitome of courtesy, re-enters the race during the 30-second lap as a gesture to his fans. But for Repco, every breakdown is important. The motor racing circuits of the world have become for Repco its testing tracks, and the experience gained from every breakdown in an engine or ancillary component will mark a further upgrading in the quality of Repco automotive parts. Jim Clark outlasts his big race rivals and chalks up an unbeatable lead in the Tasman Cup Series. Jack went on to win the last race of the series down under at Longford, Tasmania in record time. The Australian Export Award flag flies proudly over the Repco Brabham Engine Company's building in Melbourne where racing engines for local and export requirements are now in production. Although the plant is tooling up to meet an ever-increasing demand for its engines, the venture is being treated also as a research project. The reasons for the remarkable successes of the engine are readily apparent in this highly specialized plant. Here, for instance, is a vertical cinematic computerized drilling, boring and tapping machine in which every operation is automatically controlled by a master tape. Background of more than 40 years of automotive experience and research has gone into the development of this racing engine manufacturing project. Already an enormous amount of valuable information has accrued from the venture, and by going into the Grand Prix business, Repco has been able to reveal to the world, in a dramatic fashion, something of the high quality of its large range of automotive products. Throughout the world, most racing engines have been produced by relatively small specialist firms, which buy from outside suppliers nearly all the components they use. The Repco Brabham engine is a unique contrast. Its parts come from Repco plants located throughout Australia. Melbourne is the main manufacturing centre with gaskets from a Repco factory in Brisbane, Queensland, cylinder linings from a Repco plant in Sydney, New South Wales, and bearings from yet another in Tasmania. Drop forgings for the connecting rods are made in Melbourne, Victoria. So are the oil seals. No engine is better than its weakest part and the world's currently most successful racing engine is an assembly of superb parts. This will be obvious to every automotive engineer, and the racing successes are a basic reason for the tremendous interest in Repco products now being experienced by the Repco export division throughout the world, where Repco already export to 95 countries. The Repco watchword has always been precision. 
and the experience gained in this plant will be carried over into satisfying the ordinary everyday needs of the world's motoring public. As a result of its successes on the world's international motor racing circuits, Repco is demonstrating in a practical way something of its achievement in the field of automotive components manufacture. The fantastic year of Repco Brabham has indicated to the world's motoring public that things are really progressing down under. This story of the fantastic year has been followed since by another, consolidating Repco's world leadership in racing engine manufacture, with Denny Holm world champion and Jack Brabham runner-up and again winner of the manufacturer's trophy. To crown this double-barreled success story, Repco was commissioned by Goodyear America to power its entries in the Indianapolis 500 of 1968. This is America's accolade for Repco engineers, who are currently developing new 3-litre Formula One engines to meet the increasing competition that they will face in the World Championship races of the future.